Hi guys, Mr. Kane here. Hi guys, Mrs. Gaswish. <laughs> yeah, let's just go. It's molecular formula. I got nothing. Yeah, I got, I got nothing. nothing. Uh, I call this one MF for short. Remember, yep. I called the other one empirical formula EF for short. Now this is MF. All right. So, a molecular formula by definition is the actual number of atoms in a compound. It turns out that the molecular formula, the MF, is a multiple of the EF, the empirical formula. So is the empirical formula kind of like the shortcut formula, and then this one is the real formula? This one's the real formula, yeah. Yeah, it turns out that uh, based on the science at the time, Dalton's time, they could only really get empirical formulas. They needed more sophisticated equipment to figure out the moleculars. Okay. Okay. So basically, CH3 we know is an empirical formula. Correct. Mm -hmm. So a molecular formula is a multiple of this. But I could... So I could state a couple of different molecular formulas for that, Mr. Kane. I mean, like what? Well, I could do C2H6, C3H9, C4H12. I see a couple of different multiples. Yeah, there's there's around in several there. options. And ma matter of fact, you missed one. You missed CH3. Oh, because the multiple, the empirical, could be actually the molecular. Right. The empirical and the molecular might actually be the same formula. Or it could be, like you said, C2H6, or C3H9, or C4H12. And matter of fact, um, there's an infinite number of uh, possibilities here. Okay, so how do you work the molecular formula? Uh, this is, uh, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. I'm oh, glad you asked. Oh, okay. All right. So, to use empirical, for we use the empirical formula to determine the molecular formula. Okay. And there are steps. Oh, more steps. Yeah, there's no poem this time. So first you find the empirical formula. Okay. Find the empirical formula is the poem. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by smallest, multiply to whole. Percent to mass, mass to whole. No. We've recited this in class a thousand oh, times, Mrs. Gosh. G. And I still can't get it. Percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by smallest, multiply to whole. I got it. Technically <sighs> speaking, then, we would have to do the previous video, video steps. Right. Okay, to get to this point. To get to this point. To get number one. It's all four steps. Okay. Okay. Then find the empirical formula mass. So that's exactly like finding the molar mass. It's just that it's the empirical formula's mass. Okay. okay. So it's you not just necess add them all up. Right. Add them all up. Okay. okay. Uh, then you divide the molecular mass by the empirical mass. So you're trying to find a ratio. Okay. okay. You're trying to find the multiple. Right. And like it says here, you are going to be given the molecular mass. Okay, because All we right. need sophisticated equipment to come up with yeah, that. Yeah, it's got to be in okay. the problem, doesn't it? Uh, and then you multiply each of the subscripts by the answer from, from step three. So you multiply the subscripts you got for the empirical by the number you got in number three right. to find the multiple of the molecular, and then you get the molecular mass. Right. Oh, not mass, I beg your pardon. You then the you get the molecular formula. formula. Right. The molecular formula is a multiple of the empirical. Right. That's so, very easy. So the whole reason why you do step number three is you're trying to compare how heavy the actual molecule is to the empirical formula. Well, it's the ratio. So if the molecular mass is twice as heavy as the empirical mass, you multiply everything by two. Then the molecular formula is twice the empirical formula. Right. If the molecular mass winds up being three times that of the empirical mass. And the molecular formula is three times the empirical. Exactly. That's, oh. the, that's logical, right? Yeah, this is a snap. Science is logic. All right. The empirical formula for ethylene. This is the first way to do it. The empirical formula for ethylene is CH2. Find the molecular formula if the molecular mass is 28.1 grams per mole. Okay, so they already did the, all the work for us. They're actually yep. giving us the EF in the problem. Yeah, the empirical formula has already been done for you. So That's they, nice. they did percent of mass, mass to mole, divided by smallest, multiply till whole. So You know that poem a little too well, Mr. Kane. I've said it for years and years and years. All right. All right, so find the molecular formula if the molecular mass is 28.1 grams per mole. So they gave us the molecular mass. Okay. Where so we need to start is we need to start at step two. Step okay. two said find the empirical mass. All right, so we have the empirical formula. We need the empirical mass. There's one carbon and two hydrogens. I can do this by hand. So we're talking about 14.03 grams for the empirical formula. Right. Empirical formulas, mass. Mass. Throw an M in there, so I, yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, there was a grams there. Okay. 
All right, uh, so when we do this, we want to make a ratio out of this. We want to compare the molecular formula's mass to the empirical formula's mass. Which will give you a value of 2. Which should give me a whole number, which uh, turns out 28.1 divided by 14.03 is close enough to 2 to two. call 2. The okay. grams and grams cancel. So what this is saying is that it's 2 times more massive. Okay, so the molecular formula is twice the empirical. Right. Okay. So, and that's why it says always a whole number here. This is always a whole number. Mm -hmm. Okay. What that means is that CH2, we have to multiply everything by 2. That's the empirical formula. Okay. The molecular formula, after I multiply things by 2, is going to be C2 H4. H4. And this is my molecular formula. Which is the actual formula of the compound. Right, that's the actual formula, the real formula. All right, now, mm -hmm. I'll, Mr. Kane, for the ratio, I like to refer to it as the me ratio because it's the molecular mass over the empirical mass. So I kind of call it the me ratio. The me ratio, molecular over right. empirical. And if that doesn't work, the big number's on top. Yeah, the big number's always on top because yeah. always the empirical is always smaller than the molecular. Yeah. The empirical is the reduced form. Correct. By definition. Ooh, okay. All right. So All if right. you know your definitions, logic should help you. Science is logic. I thought science was repetitious. It's repetitiously logical. Okay. It's logically repetitious. All right, so here's example number two. We have an anti-cancer medicine, which is carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen percentages given. All right. And again, all molecular all on the right hand side so a molecular compound just like the previous example the experimental molar mass hey wait a minute why is it called molar mass now instead of molecular that's the same thing though molar, isn't it molar mass and molecular mass are the same concept okay yeah. good it's just two different words for the same thing that kind of threw me because the molar mass is the molecular mass yeah, yeah. All right, now we were not given the empirical formula in this example like the previous one. So we have to go back and do those steps, yeah? Right, so I gotta do percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by smallest, multiply to whole, which you can see that I've already got started on while you were blabbing on, Mrs. G. Oh, sorry, Mr. Kane. No, that's okay, you gave me time to work here. Uh, I'm getting going here. Uh, hydrogen is 1.01 .01 and All right, so let's see. From mass to moles, the carbon is 4.28 moles. 4 sig figs. 4.280 moles. Okay. 3 sig figs. The hydrogen is going to be 8.54 moles. And the nitrogen is going to be 2.8 Five, three moles. Okay, so step one done, step two done, step three divide by the smallest. So that's the 2.853 is the smallest of the bunch and you divide them all by that. All right, Mr. G, last time I didn't give you the chance. 2.853 divided by 2.853? One. All right, there we go. I can do it in my head. How about carbon? 4.20 divided by 2.8? Divided by that will give me 1.50. Oh, right. I'm going to be doing step number four. Yeah, and it, I'm just going to write down 1.5 because I know these are going to be easy Yeah, you're going to easy, whole numbers, numbers anyway. And then the hydrogen is 2.9933403433. I'm going to say three. I'm saying three, too. That yep. seems logical. All right, so step number four is multiply till whole. So it looks like two, two. is what I'm going to need yeah. here. So i got to multiply them all by two. And what I'm getting for an empirical formula is... Uh, let's see, I'm getting three here, six here, and two here. Nice whole so numbers. The empirical formula, EF, is going to be C3H6N2. I hear you punching buttons there, Mrs. G. Yeah, Hope. how come, Mr. K? What do you think I'm up to here? I'm, I'm thinking you're finding the, um, uh, the empirical formula's mass for me. You are so right, Mr. Kane. The empirical formula mass, Mr. Kane, is 70.11. All right, 70.11 grams for the empirical formula mass. Now, 
the mo the me ratio, as you call it, right. should be the two ten, which is given in the problem. Two hundred and ten divided by seventy point one one. And I get a two point nine nine five two nine. Oh, that sounds like three. That sounds like three. So. What this tells me is the molecular formula is three times heavier than the empirical. Okay. So I'm thinking that for a final answer for the molecular formula, I'm going to write it up here since there's room, I'm going to go three times heavier. So C9, uh -huh. H18, uh -huh. N6. All right. Each of those is three times more than the empirical so formula. So that's the actual formula, and the other one is the shortcut formula. So I'm going to write MF, C9, H18, N6. Okay.